Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes here. I'm the founder of Augusta Lawn Care. We have almost 70 locations around North America. But today I'm talking about why the new 1.2 trillion dollar stimulus package for infrastructure that was just passed today by the United States government is actually going to kill small businesses and how any stimulus package that the government pumps into the system typically leads to businesses, small businesses being negatively affected, and most of that money goes to shareholders of large corporations. And what's very interesting to me is people that are in government, this is praised and everyone's happy, and you, you know, t pictures today, everyone's super happy and applauding the fact that they are able to spend one point two trillion dollars, all of which is debt. It's like literally people celebrating that it's when they've got a big loan. All right, uh, but past that, it's a matter of that this money is actually going to negatively impact the people that actually are thinking that this is gonna create jobs for small businesses, when it does absolutely the opposite. And so a lot of times the reason that from a political standpoint these packages will get passed is because this money is going to create jobs, it's going to improve the economy and put money back in the pockets of Americans, which is all absolutely in the short term and in the long term always the opposite. And I'm going to prove that today. Now I'm not going to go into the taxation part, it's a completely different element of how taxes are affected by stimulus, but at the end of the day, obviously I'm a capitalist and I believe that the uh, the the market left to its own demise, left to its own devices, will eventually equilibrate and it'll eventually even out. We have an extremely efficient market that when there's oversupply, the price comes down and then demand uh, eventually will catch up. It's extremely um, efficient and it's all based upon the supply and demand curve. So I'm going to use this from a very elementary standpoint to explain to you why when stimulus packages are passed, especially for things like infrastructure, that the bulk of that money will not go to small businesses. It will definitely not help the lower to middle class people. Um, and so I think it's a massive political move to say it does because it's just not true and I'm going to explain and prove to you uh, why here. So. Uh, first of all, supply and demand curve, okay? What this basically means is that if supply goes up, then demand uh, and then price will go down, and if demand goes up, price will also go up. So what that what we can do is say, okay, let's use the example of cars, okay? So down here we have quantity of cars, over here we have the price for the cars. So what we can do first is say, okay, well, what happens if everybody wants a car? Massive demand. Okay, well, what that's going to do, it's going to shift this demand curve over. And I talk all about more about supply demand curves in a lot more detail in my MBA for Entrepreneurs course, link down in the description, you can check it out. Now if I do that, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to create this new demand curve right here. And you'll notice what happened is this equilib equilibrium is where supply and demand meet. That is where the price actually is, you know, the transaction takes place. So what happened is this equ uh, equilibrium, I always say this wrong, sorry. Uh, the equilibrium moved from here all the way up to here. That price differential now means that we just raised our price from this point to this point. That is by moving the demand curve forward or increasing demand. Now let's do the same thing with the supply curve. Okay, say, all right, we're gonna shut down uh, facilities, we're gonna shut down factories, we're going to have a port uh, issue where we can't get parts and things in, we're gonna have a, sh a labor shortage and all the rest of it. What's that going to do? Well, that, what that's going to do is actually decrease supply. Okay, that's gonna move the supply curve this direction. We're decreasing supply. We're decreasing the quantity of trucks and vans that are available. So that, what is that going to do? That's gonna move the supply curve back this way. Now what we've done is we've moved the price even further up to right here. This is what we're seeing right now in our economy is the fact that now the price is very inflated just today, I talked to one of our franchisees that's just getting started. They're, the mower they bought was 21 inch mower. It's, to, it's a Xmark 21 inch mower, typically gonna cost $1,100, $1,200 just a year ago. Today, $1,900, almost $2,000 for that exact same mower. And they were really happy because they didn't have to wait five or six months to get a different model that they actually were looking for. So this is what's causing massive inflation right now. And if you talk to the government, you know, right now they're gonna say inflation is like five to six percent, which means five to six percent is the increase of price 
on an annualized basis across all systems. Now, if you talk to the average American, their rent has gone up more than 5% in the past year. Cost of fuel, cost of vehicles has gone up more than 5% in the past year. In my opinion, the actual number that this is probably to most of us is like 10 to 15% which is eating away into most people's pockets. Now, it's not eating the pocketbooks of people that have investments in the stock market or real estate simply because their, their asset prices are going up in, in the exact same, if not a higher, great, greater amount than 10 to 15% in the past year and in the future. Who this is actually affecting the most is wage earners at the bottom level of the economic status. Um, and this is what is very alarming to me is that those people are buying the idea that this stimulus package is gonna give them better, more money, them better jobs. Now, you might be saying, well, this stimulus package is going to give them more jobs. Let me explain why this is also false. Okay, when it comes, one of the things that people are not talking about right now, when it comes to the labor shortage that everyone's experiencing and the uh, massive amount of you know, unemployment or uh, uh, people needing employees, right? So all business owners, we can't find enough employees. Why is that? It's because when we went through, when we went through the COVID and everything, what happened is now all of a sudden, virtual work became a reality. And furthermore, com big companies, big companies now have the luxury to hire people anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world really. They don't have to be dependent on people coming into an office or having a big office building. They can hire around the whole country and they can do it in markets that are, that used to be 10, 11, $12 an hour for frontline employees, and they're, they're willing to pay them 18 or 19 because that's really cheap compared to Silicon Valley or New York or Los Angeles, and they're willing and happy to pay a much higher premium price. Then you say, oh, that's all hearsay, that's, that's not true, uh, whatever. No, that's literally what we're doing at Augusta Lawn Care, is we, the cost of, of labor has gone up so much in our area, we are working on a virtual training system and a virtual way to be able to hire people for our call center because I can hire someone in Michigan, Ohio, different areas of the United States, and they're very happy at 10, uh, 15, 16, $17 per hour to be able to work remotely and be on the phone, and they can make bonuses on top of that based upon their performance, but at the base pay, 15, 16, $17 an hour to work from home, have flexible hours, et cetera, they don't mind that. Locally, you can't, you can't find anybody for that kind of money because the cost of everything has gone up, and the cost of everything has gone up a whole lot more than five or 6% for most Americans. And you can do the exact same thing for labor. Demand for laborers has gone massively higher. Supply has gone way down. Unemployment's really low. People don't need, necessarily need the jobs. But more importantly, this massive inflated cost of labor, trucks, equipment, can easily be absorbed by a big company. Why? Because when the shipping costs double and triple, you know what Walmart's doing right now? They're literally going and buying a, a ship to be able to ship stuff across, the, uh, across to China. They can do that, small businesses can't. Small businesses don't have a large enough operations to hire internationally, to hire people around the country and set up training systems and modules and insurance and register in different states. They don't have that capacity. So what is this going to do? This is going to shove all the money that's going into infrastructure right now is going to go to big corporations and investors in Fortune 500 companies and massive conglomerates. That's where the money is gonna go and it's going to hurt small businesses because we will not be able able to stay up with the wage inflation, the inflation of our materials and raw goods, our inflation of equipment, we will not be able to stay up with it. It'll only be the massive publicly traded companies that can afford to pay people $20 an hour in a market where usually it's $10, $12 an hour. Guess who's gonna lose out? The local offices in that area, in that community that will not be able to pay $20 an hour. Whereas Tesla, Peloton, Apple, Google, they'll be more than happy to pay tech support $20 an hour working out of Podunk, you know, Idaho or wherever, some crazy in the sticks place. Uh, that's going to make ma wreak massive havoc on small businesses, and uh, I, I don't really say this as a politically motivated, I don't say anything, I'm just, you gotta be aware, inflation is happening, and there's two ways to get around it. One, grow your business to the point where you can absorb these costs, have a brand to where you can raise your prices and allow your customers to absorb the price increases that you need to charge uh, to, in order to pay higher wages and pay inflated costs, or two, so e 
Option one is grow your business. That way you can have a brand, raise your prices, etc. Or two is get assets like stocks and real estate that will go up with the price of inflation as a hedge against the cost of everything going up. And that's what this channel is really all about. Business, investing in stocks and real estate because those are the things that are going to actually allow you to benefit and participate when this flood of money comes in the system. I don't know if it's good, bad, or indifferent. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the recent uh, stimulus package. There's more to come. We're going to be flush with cash. This number will keep going up. And it, unfortunately, it's going to fall mostly on the, the, lower to middle, the lower class and the lower middle class. And I'm very concerned about small businesses that are in that category and just getting started because they're not going to be able to stay up.